Oh, they just like went. <laughs> All right, let's uh get back, get right into the game. Um, we have uh, Martel Crossing versus Tark Horror. We have um. Gen Genesis versus Nimer. I really haven't taken a look at anyone's deck lists. Um, we have quick look here. All right, so this, this looks like it's just turn one marshalling. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't missed like anything. So set up. Uh, Genesis sets up with Raider Shadow City. Bastard, um, the reserve ship, what's this thing called? Summer Seaport and a fiefdom. And we have Nemer sets up with Tokar, Loyalist, and Double Card and Shadows. Pretty strong four, uh, four card setups from both players. And we see Late Summer's Feast into Pentoshi, so just giant, giant, giant econ plots. Immediate, immediate marshalling of Dorne. So, really, really strong, obviously, if you get to see Dorne on turn one. Fiefdom's back to ten. Uh, we see Obara get marshaled and has finished marshaling, holding four gold. What possibly can Martel do with this gold? Martel has three copies of Doran's game, two copies of Princess Plan, and two copies of Vengeance for Elia. So a lot, a lot of things that can be done. You also have um. Any ambush cards? I'm looking quickly at uh, anything you can ambush for four. Uh, Shadow City Bastard has ambush three. I didn't realize that. Okay, but it's probably one of the events. We see Reducer, and then we see Khal Drogo. N Nico does not have any uh, Ehan right now in terms of his locations. Although he's only playing 10 locations. So I don't think that is something that is, you know, out of the too out of the ordinary. It's interesting that he's playing only 10 locations, but not playing Political Disaster. You would think you you know if you're sacrificing that kind of consistency you would play political disaster, but maybe his deck is just so uh, so you know low to the ground. It's, it is a really 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 lean machine. Um, your bigs basically are Khal Drogo and Core Danny, and then you have three copies of Aegon Targaryen, three copies Dario, three copies of the. Uh, Barris, uh, Sir Barristan that stands himself after you um, win a challenge with less cards in your hand. Uh, Milks, Obara. Doesn't want any sand snakes coming in. And sitting on four gold right now.
Yeah, generally this is why I uh, I didn't I want these games password protected because uh, you know 15 spectators that just keep hopping in and out is a little bit uh, distracting and annoying. We see Beggar King get placed on Call Drogo. So in challenges, we see Dario brings, or Aegon brings Dario with them. Is that just like double Aegon in shadows? I'm trying to look here. Oh, it could be Queen's Guard. And it could be Dragon Skull, or the only other cards with shadows, I believe, in this deck. So, Genesis just doesn't do any challenges with uh, his, his small characters. We see Intrigue coming out from Dario. Any of its companion, army, and mercenary. Or not, not army, ally. So, none of these characters. Oh, you can stand, he can stand his Targaryen loyalist because he's an ally. That's pretty sweet. So, Dorn triggers... Oh, Desert Raider is an ally. That's sick, actually. Well, okay, cool. So he's gonna he's gonna be able to. So this card's King's Landing to claim. Uh, uses the Tokar for um Kohor. That's actually really sick. Now uh, Genesis doesn't have the Desert Raider for Claim Soak, and then also the ability to then trigger him. It does not look like he's playing any Black Market Merchants, um, Alejandra. I'll, uh, I'll quickly list or link the deck lists so people don't have to go through the spreadsheet. Hey, thanks for the bits, Trey. <coughs> Really do appreciate any support. I'm mostly doing this for fun, but I mean, obviously, you know, people still enjoy random things. So, military comes in with Caldrogo, basically looking to clear the uh, clear, clear the board here. Although this character can um, Shadow City Bastard can uh, strip the icon from uh, Desert Raider, so he won't be able. He sh he shouldn't. I guess that's the same thing, right? That takes the same. That, that does the same thing. Thanks. Thanks for the bets, Alejandra. <laughs> um, because if you sack your guy to strip the icon, it's basically killing him. We're gonna get a lot of Dorn triggers this turn, though. Uh, if he has Vengeance for Elia here, that would be really, really good. Nope. We see claim claim triggering. Claims Obara. Um, is that a 1x or. Yeah, that's only a 1x, so it's the sting of, of losing that character. Obviously, you don't want to lose, lose you know, a bigger character, but you're not going to draw any dupes, so that's always great. Gains power from Renown. Basically, through through this game, we're gonna see how how Nico can manage this this game with basically no extra econ. Uh, Nico's restricted list card is breaking ties. Actually, also that's something something of note. He's playing breaking ties, and then uh, obviously Martell's card is already in play. Desert Raider. <clears throat> so we we do see the um, Shadow City Bastard strip the icon, so you don't take another unopposed. 
So that's, you know, minus one power. And then we see a power challenge for unopposed. I guess this is the same thing as standing for Dom. If you just stand, it's five to four. You win Dom. This is unopposed. Same thing. Oh, I guess this is until end of phase, so you don't actually win Dom. Because at the end of the phase, the character will go back, so you would lose Dom immediately then. Yeah, never mind. This is actually correct. Yeah, we actually, uh, the two restricted list cards in this, uh, in this matchup are actually, uh, made by players who are currently playing in this tournament. We have, uh, Breaking Ties being played by LGV, who is on Team Brazil, and then we have, uh, Desert Raider by Istvan, who we just saw play against, uh, Colt yesterday. So that's always pretty cool. This card's Desert Scavenger to reserve. Um, having having plus two reserve right now is pretty great. Let's see. So, oh, that's a pretty cool. So Nico dis discards Citadel Ar Archivist to reserve, and then shuffles in Milk and uh, Tokar, I believe. Call Drogo has Beggar King and Bodyguard, so at least at least the Beggar King will help him uh, get some econ because this is this is at least an econ card with a reducer and Beggar King. It's not that bad, right? So we see King Plot flip here. King Plot against second late summer feast. So uh, Beggar King triggers. So seven gold with a reducer. This 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 could be good for uh, for Nico here. So, we have Genesis collecting 10 gold. Interested to see how he's going to maneuver this spot here. We have a pretty beefy Call Drogo here. And, you know, playing Crossing, you definitely want to get your challenges in. We see Rikasa with Bisto too. So, uh, something like Starfall would be really good here to control the icons. Oh right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, not not this turn, not this turn, Hob. I, I for sure king. It doesn't do anything this turn because the king plot. You know, king plots are really fun and interactive card if you ask me. But uh, you know, f for the following turns, king plot would be, or I mean, uh, starfall would be helpful. So we see Quentin Martel get played, uh, holding back two gold for Genesis. We see Aegon get duped, and. Quentin is three or fewer plot cards. You have to kneel him. Oh, because of Rikasso, you don't have to. Perfect. We do see Nico grab some econ here with a Mirrorneys market. And then we see Jaqui come out. Who has... After... Okay, so this is this is just a quick way to get a lot of power on Call Drogo if you so choose. Um, I think Jaqui works a lot better if... you know Say, say this Voltron target had been Danny instead. It would have been. Oh, oh, oh! Really, Hub? Car designed by Jacob or I. I don't know if if they're from a different country. It's either Jacob or or Jakob uh, Holtman. Interesting. You think you think the game's gonna end this turn, uh, Francis? It's only two power, right? Like like even even if you take all unopposed. And all the renown, you still can't win, right? Like it looks, it looks bad, but I mean, I don't know. It looked bad for the, um, it looked bad in Colt's game the other day when Colt, uh, Robert Strong, Rikasso, like it looked like Colt was gonna eventually win, but it turned out not to be the case. So I think, you know, obviously, I think in Game of Thrones, yeah, yeah, exactly, not in per se. You, you think that this this turn will be too too much for the for the Martel player to come back from.
So Genesis just takes no challenges again. It's interesting that you would take this kind of strategy and then use crossing as your agenda. But I mean, I don't know that much about deck building or strategy in this game. I, I just take whatever, you know, whatever deck and only know how to play that deck. So I could, you know, I could very well be wrong. I guess crossing helps a lot when you want to turn the corner. You can close the game out after you've established control. Oh, that also, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, JB Stewart points out that the third challenge makes it much easier to trigger Doran's game. And, you know, we, we do know that Genesis was playing three copies of that card. That's, that's a fair point for sure. So we see Nico come in with a power challenge. Use the seal of the hand to stand called Drogo. Just trying to rack up the renown and uh, claim. I wonder if Nico will do the military challenge to turn on Desert Raider. It's probably worth it, right? Just to... We see a double defense with eight. And then we're going to see uh, Prince's plan onto Rokasso, probably. It does, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, because uh, Nico's not playing any burn. So we see Prince's plan give a um, Intrigue icon and three strength to Quentin. And this will actually win uh, Genesis the the um, challenge here. We have uh, Late Summer's Feast triggering, though, and giving Nico a card. So this does deny the claim and denies a Renown on Caldrogo while giving you Renown. That, that was a huge defense, actually. You deny the Jiku trigger too. So we see Intrigue coming out here. We see trading, oh, tr nice, trading sacrifices seal the hand to get Queen's Guard. Uses Queen's Guard to do another challenge then. Or, sorry, he uses the, the Drogo to do the challenge, and then he can use Queen's Guard to do the challenge again. Oh, nice, discards Masande to uh, Queen's Guard. Doesn't even actually cost him a card. How lucky. What reset is Genesis playing, if any? Oh, Genesis is playing Dohiris and Morgulus. The thing is, the way the board is set up, neither of those resets really help him. <laughs>
Doharis, you probably just shuffle back Aegon and Masande. Or sorry, put them on the bottom and then you keep Jiqui, uh, Drogo, and the Loyalist. This allows you to potentially reshadows. Uh, uses Kohor on Beggar King, it looks like. Oh, n never mind. It looks like, um, okay, so Beggar King got discarded to get Mercenary Contract. And then we saw Jiqui discard another Mercenary Contract to uh, get a give a power to Drogo. So here comes Unopposed. And then Renown. This is a lot of power coming out here from Nico. Really making good use of this King Plot turn. Now we have this just huge Khal Drogo that can stand so many times. So Nico's deck is called Breaking Contract. So, uh... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Alejandro pointing out that Mercenary Contract and Dario next turn is going to be so gross. Oh, right, because it gives the attached character the mercenary trait. That's actually a really, really sick combo. So, he no longer has king, right? But, like, the king pot's over now? I wonder what plots we're going to see. Is, is Genesis going to flip a, a reset here? I mean, a reset doesn't really help help you. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, did did deny one more trigger of Jiqui. It, it is it is really hard sometimes to remember that all, all the characters have have unlimited triggers on their abilities. Um, that's definitely the one, probably the biggest uh, difference between the two games that I play. Okay, so flips uh, at Doran's behest, and then flips Valor Morgulus. After flipping return. So basically, he thought about the reset. But then uh, got one-upped by Prince, uh, but at, uh, um, at Doran's behest. That was actually really well done by Genesis. Uh, it, it. So he did go first. He did go first, I believe. Oh, I see. He didn't go first. Interesting. How does how how does how does this work? So if when when you when you choose your new plot for Doran's Doran's behest, it immediately triggers, right? Like you can't you can't wait for them to flip their card and then use return. Is that correct? Am I correct in assuming that? Yeah, it triggers on the spot, right? So regard yeah, regardless of of the of the the choice. You are you're not gonna be able to line up return against one of the resets is basically is basically the end the end thing. So we see Starfall come out, but then immediately gets seized by the guard, bestowing four gold it looks like. Oh sorry, it bestows one gold. I see it in chat now. <laughs> So without the Beggar King and the Reducer, uh, Nico only only received um, what four gold? Or did he sack something to return? No, it didn't sack anything.
four plus one, so five gold. What is he gonna do with his other three gold? I'm not really quite sure. He's pretty he's pretty insulated from Valor Dohiris also. Um, he'll probably get marched next turn though. Genesis is basically just trying to weather the storm at the moment and, and just, you know, use Dorn to buoy himself. But, you know, this giant standing Call Drogo is, you know, m multiple stands on Call Drogo is going to be really tough. Uh, it, call, it being Call Drogo and not Danny is at least a, a, a nice boon because the inside, you're not getting uh, just hit by inside over and over again. So we see Nemer brings out Dragon Skull out of shadows onto Aegon for more renown, along with uh, Intimidate. So uses Power Challenge first, discarded Missande to stand Call Drogo. So Desert Raider comes back and strips the power icon from Call Drogo. Why Why strip the power icon and not the military icon? Oh, you can't strip military icons. I always forget that. Always forget that. So, did, is that the, is that potentially a game? Oh, no, no, he can, if he intimidates the, the Desert Raider, is that, is that game? So, takes claim... If you intimidate Desert Raider, you get unopposed to 11, renowned to 12, claims the Raider. You stand Call Drogo, you go 13, 14, and then you can't bring back the Raider, and then you win Dom. I believe, I believe this this is game if you if you sequence everything properly. So intimidate comes out, Dragon Skull. Oh yeah, and I forgot about the um. You could have... Uh, I forgot about the Renown and Dragon Skull. All right. Alejandro's pointing out, I had to go look this up, since people were saying it wasn't possible, but Nico, or Nico could have made himself go first, trigger Behest, then trigger Return to the Fields after a VM is revealed. Is that how that goes? So when... When when you flip Doran's Behest, you don't... You don't immediately trigger the new plot when revealed. You It goes, it goes like, on the stack again, in, in quotation marks. And then you choose to resolve them again. Oh, it's all, it's just always when revealed, regardless of when it is revealed in the turn. That's that's interesting. Okay, that, that's good to know. Um, you know, anyone anyone watching the game, uh, or or listening later on, that's a really good rules interaction to know. Then, maybe Nico didn't know. Uh, it works that way, or or he didn't think about it. But obvi obviously, obviously, I feel like if he if he had thought about it, he would have definitely done it that way. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, sure, sure. So the because, yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Um, because if he makes himself go first, then he doesn't flip VM into return. I see. So there's no way for him to match up the or line up the um the return versus the VM because 
VM would never get flipped unless Genesis is first player. I see. One cool thing about getting to cast these games is I get to learn all the all these interactions. So we see the Dragon Skull get pitched to then get another or to then get a Queen's Guard for a, uh, Aegon. So Mercenary Cantrax stood Call Drogo, used Mirani's Market to put Queen's Guard on the bottom after getting Silver Steed. And that's it. Yeah, it's just so so much power. That was a really really cool game. Um, really showed the power of, you know, just renown and multiple multiple triggers. You know, we see this call Drogo with seven power. All right, sorry sorry for, uh, r real quick. Um, I'll just point out exactly what happened in that final turn. So. We did, we got the Dragon Skull, so we got the first initial power challenge, Renown, Renown, Claim, Stand, then we used Kohor on Queensguard to get the Silver Steed, put Queensguard on the bottom, use Silver Steed to initiate a second uh, power challenge, did a military challenge, did another power challenge, and with all the unopposed and renowns, you know, uh, Nico Nico ended up getting it. Nico still had another military challenge also because of Call Drogo, so he could have done five challenges that turn. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream here. Um, Everyone who's watching, uh, thanks for watching. I'm, you know, just pay attention to the channel or, or follow my stream. Uh, I'm, you know, probably gonna stream multiple games today. So thanks everyone for tuning in, and I'll catch you soon.